Hello, and welcome to the podcast with Pastor Frank. And I, I like when people would say that, you know, I'm the love pastor because I want to love people. And even the least of my brethren, sometimes people with reduced education would come to the church or maybe they weren't the most hygienic. But I would have even greater compassion for them. And uh, I encourage you to uh, extend your love even beyond your circle into uh, other realms of love. The more love you show, the more love you'll feel, the better you feel, the you'll grow. See, it's a building block, and that's what we're going to talk about today, how to, how to grow love in your life. And let's look at the scripture from Romans 5 and verses 3 through 5. It says, and not only so, but we glo uh, glory in tribulation, knowing that uh, tribulation works patience, and that patience experience and experience hope. It says, and hope makes us not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which he has given to us. This is a key, key passage that Paul writes uh, regarding this, uh, how to grow in love, because we, we tribulate. <laughs> in this world, we will have tribulation, Jesus said. But how do you handle it? It's not about what happened to you. It's about how you handle it, your reaction. And God wants to build this into you so that when it comes, it builds experience. And you'll say, oh, I, I know how to handle that. I went through this. And experience upon experience through the tribulation, through the experience, develops a patience. That means a long-suffering, an endurance, an ability to continue. You know, I've, I've quit a couple of times in my life certain things that take me two years to get back to where I was, and I vowed to God, I will not quit in the middle of something again <laughs> by the grace of God. Amen? But see, this tribulation, it brings about patience, and the patience really is connected to hope. You know, you have a vision that this is going to work out. Even though I'm going through some tough stuff right now, with God's help, I know that I can make it. And the hope is built on the love of God that is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit who has been given to you. And so the love of God is shed abroad in my heart and your heart. And it actually says that Jesus was speaking about the Holy Spirit when he said, rivers of living water will gush forth from your innermost being after he was glorified. So the thing I want to say to you in this program, if there's anything that I can emphasize about the, your love walk, is that you don't do it alone. You do it with the help of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit inside of you will help you in your love walk if you'll lean on him. He's your helper, your comforter, he's your paraclete, your advocate. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Blessed Trinity. He is God. He is inside of you, and, and he develops the character of God in you. And the number one character is love. And, and joy in the Lord, and peace, and patience, and goodness, and kindness, and meekness, and temperance, and faithfulness. This is the character of God. You begin to take on, you know, who God is, because the Holy Spirit is God. And when you allow the Holy Spirit to, to work inside of you, the Holy Spirit has been given to us, you will walk in this divine love, and you will understand that you didn't do it. You will know that the Spirit of God gave you the grace to show the love in the moment. And I have had that happen to me when, when something happened and it's like two in the morning and, you know, my mother died and would you come to the hospital to, um, you know, I just want you to, you know, anoint her body before the, it goes to the funeral department. And, and I'm, you know, saying yes and getting in the car at three in the morning, got there by about 3.30 Hospital's quiet. I'm very familiar with the hospital setting. And we go in, and there's this parishioner with her mother's dead body. And, you know, we, like, anointed it for burial, if you will. And as I was driving, though, to the hospital, all alone on the freeway, going downtown Detroit, I felt something helping me. I said, yes, I want to do this. Yes, I'm an ambassador for Christ. Yes, I have the ministry of reconciliation. Yes, I will pour in the bomb of Gilead into that woman's heart. She's bruised. She's wounded. Her mother just died. And to think to call Pastor Frank? But what a privilege to be an ambassador for Christ. And you will have these same experiences where you feel that you are the one God chose to enter into this person's life, to, to allow them to, to feel the anointing, the, the love of the Holy Ghost through you. 
I, I count these so precious. I love the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is all I have in this world. I'm serious. I, I look at the world. I don't belong here. I, I, I look forward to that city with foundations as builder and maker as God. But the Holy Spirit is with me now. He said, I won't leave you abandoned, Jesus told us. He said, I will send the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. He will come, and he will live in you, and he will lead you, and he will guide you, and he will help you. And I want you to avail yourself of the help of the Holy Spirit in your love walk, because it's a process. You don't become a great lover all at once, but as you live out life and making these right choices with the help of God, it builds line upon line, precept upon precept, until you are walking in the love walk, and you have a love walk that no one will deny. They will say, you know, I want to love the way he loves. I want to pour out myself. I want to be a libation. Like Paul says, I'm poured out for you. I love you. And love is real, and people can tell when you're a phony. And when you really allow the Holy Spirit to love them th through you, it's real. I'm telling you, it's real. I have people tell me it's real. It, it means something. But we have to choose it. The Holy Spirit won't just do it, but we must say, I want you. I want you, Holy Spirit. I love you, Holy Spirit. Like I told you on a previous program, they said, we know the Father has. We can see the Father, and we can see Jesus. We kind of understand what he looks like. What does the Holy Spirit look like? And you know what my answer was? You. You and I are the face of the Holy Spirit when we walk in this divine love and allow them to be comforted by the paraclete, the one from heaven. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for those who are watching, that you would fill them with the Holy Spirit, that they would be Spirit-filled, that they would allow the Spirit, the cup to runneth over with the anointing. You anoint my cup, my cup runs, that the love of God would run over by the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of love that they have received from God. In Jesus' name, amen. This is very precious to me. You don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, grow this ministry. I want to tell more people about your love. You help me. Tell somebody to tune in and write me, frankjulian5 at gmail.com. And thank you for listening and tune in next week. Bye for now. On behalf of Frank Julian Ministries, we want to say thank you so much for listening. We upload podcasts every Thursday on Roku, YouTube, and audio podcasts, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. If you need prayers or are seeking a prayer community, we're here for you. Come join us on our Facebook page, Love, Prayers, and Healing Podcasts with Pastor Frank. See you next week.